May we be upstanding for the national anthem of the Republic of Kenya and uh, the East African Community Anthem, the national anthem. standing who will be led in a short word of prayer by Lois and Jerry. Let us pray. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, exalted King over all nations, our Redeemer, the author and finisher of our faith, we come before you in the spirit of confession. We know that we have great reason to hope in the abundance of your love and kindness and mercy. Forgive us all, we pray. And in so doing, may you find it pleasant to grant us your presence in all we do and say today. Make of everything good and desirable, we thank you for the gift of life, fullness of health, and soundness of mind for everyone that is gathered here today, and for the peace and prosperity we continue to enjoy as a nation. There is no authority except that which you have established. Thank you for His Excellency, the President, Dr. William Samoei Ruto, his family, and all the leaders who have joined us as we celebrate yet another milestone, the launch of our ED plant. We, continue, we count this as a blessing among others, a sustained and solid market share, an extensive network of touch points in all the major towns in East Africa, a diverse pool of talent across our network who possess an undying spirit of unity and excellence in everything they do. As the president commissions this facility, may we realize the benefit for which it has been set up. Going forward, may these benefits be of value to the overall automotive industry, our partners, our suppliers, our customers, and the prosperity of the economy at large. And when he departs, we pray, dear Lord, that you would bless the president with wisdom, discernment, and strength to lead our nation with compassion and clarity of purpose. May you guide him in all the decisions he makes, that he may be the unifying factor that brings peace and prosperity to our great nation. May we all experience joy, peace, happiness, and prosperity, all to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, trust, believe, and agree. Amen. With the permission of Your Excellency, sir, please may we resume to our seats. Your Excellency, Dr. William Ruto, President of the Republic of Kenya and the Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Forces, the Deputy Chief of Mission, Chancellor, Embassy of Japan to Kenya, His Excellency Kitagawa Yasuhisha, the Managing Director, the Chairman, Directors of Isuzu East Africa and the entire fraternity, the PS, State Department for Trade, Bona Alfred Kubundo, the stakeholders and shareholders, invited guests, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. With your permission, Your Excellency, sir, allow me to invite Madam Rita Kavaje, the MD, Isuzu East Africa, to make her welcome remarks. Welcome, Madam MD.
Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Samuel Ruto, the Principal Secretary State Department for Trade, Mr. Alfred Kombujo, government officials present, His Excellency, Gitagawa Yasuhisa, Deputy Chief of Mission, Embassy of Japan, Isuzu East Africa Board of Directors, led here today by Mr. Hiroshi Hisatomi, the Chairman of our Board, Mr. Erastas Njoroge, the representative from Kenya Development Corporation, Mr. Fred Murimi, the representative from Centum Investments, our esteemed customers and business partners, members of the Fourth Estate, ladies and gentlemen, Karibuni Sana, Namjisikie Mkonyumbani, Hapa Kwetu Isuzu East Africa. The Isuzu family is honored and extremely delighted that you could join us today as we launch the electrodeposition paint plant, the first one in sub-Sahara Africa, excluding South Africa. Your Excellency, we're excited that you are the first Kenyan president to visit this, this plant since we started production in 1977. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, as the name suggests, electrodeposition is a method of painting that uses electric current to ensure the paint reaches all surfaces of a vehicle, giving it an ultra finish uh, look. With the launch of the ED plant, our production capacity today moves from 11,000 vehicles to 18,000 units per annum. The Isuzu ED plant is also available to other auto manufacturers in the industry, including motorcycle and three-wheeler assemblers. Over the years, we have remained committed to the development of local content suppliers to international standards. As you have seen, Your Excellency, our vehicle contain over 40% local content, which includes paint, vehicle bodies, leaf springs, battery seats, among others. Your Excellency, I wish to express our great uh, gratitude to the government of Kenya for creating progressive policy environment. The vehicle leasing program, the Buy Kenya, Build Kenya initiative, the revised assembly regulations have been instrumental in nearly doubling the vehicle production in Kenya. Your Excellency, this has moved the industry from 7,000 units produced per year to 12,000 units produced per annum in just four years. During this period, Isuzu East Africa has remitted 21 billion shillings uh, in taxes to the government and created over 10,000 new jobs. <laughs> Last year, Your Excellency, our company was the top contributor to the exchequer, earning recognition from the Kenya Revenue Authority. <laughs> what we learn from this, Your Excellency, is that Progressive policy is critical to the growth of our economy. Your Excellency, in the last four years, Isuzu has invested 3 billion uh, shillings in facility upgrade consisting of dynamic test center, water leak test, uh, boots, a new uh, pickup assembly plant, and the ED plant that you have launched today. These investments, Your Excellency, are geared to prepare Isuzu to play a significant role in the Africa continent of free trade. With an installed production capacity of 41,000 units per year, Kenya has the potential to be a major auto and industrial hub in Africa. To achieve this industry scale and competitiveness, we appeal to you for your support in the following key areas. Number one, 
full implementation of the KS1515 standard. This will be, this, Your Excellency, will be a game changer for the industry. We will double production of commercial vehicles from 12,000 units per year to 24,000 units in two years. This will also create an additional 10,000 jobs that we so much need. Number two, to expedite the enactment of the national automotive policy into law. This will pave way for the formation of the National Automotive Council that will be responsible for scaling up the local automotive industry to export competitiveness. <laughs> to enforce the 40% local content policy on major infrastructure projects, allowing local businesses to supply products and services. <laughs> Number four, Your Excellency, to sustain our operations and invest and continue to grow scale, we need your support, personal support, to fast track the payment of pending bills. <laughs> your Excellency, as I conclude, I thank you for visiting our facility and officially launching the Isuzu Electrodeposition Paint Plant. To our distinguished guests, we appreciate you for joining us today. I would also like to thank Isuzu Africa staff who have prepared for this day with great pride. <laughs> Last but not least, Your Excellency, I would like to thank your government team that worked with us to make this day a success. I witnessed a very good speed. I was trying to catch up with them, and I thought as a leader, they're just copying what you're asking them to do to be fast in implementing projects. Thank you all, and God bless Kenya. At this point, Your Excellency, allow me to invite my chairman, Mr. Hiroshi Hisatomi, to make his, re his remarks. Welcome, chairman. Thank you, Madam Ritter. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Samoy Rutherford, for the interest of the time, allow me, sir, to write on the established protocol. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today is a special occasion as we gather here to witness the launch of the, our new electric deposition paint plant. On behalf of the East Africa Board and shareholders, I extend a very warm welcome to you all. We are especially honored by the presence of the President of Kenya, Your Excellency, Dr. William Reuters. Your Excellency, we thank you for visiting East East Africa and launching the ED Paint plan today. Our local assembly operations has been in existing here in Mombasa Road for the last 45 years at this plan. As Madam Ritter said, the investment in the ED plant has increased our production capacities for more than 60% per year. In 2017, Isuzu Motors Japan acquired 57.7% shareholding in its company, from General Motors Corporation US, because of the great confidence in the high growth potential in these regions. Isuzu Motors came into the business with three major areas of commitment. So to deepen manufacturing excellence, build technical expertise and the capacities, and expand after sales services. Isuzu East Africa has since 
2017 became a training hub for Isumota International University Dubai for Sub-Saharan Africans. We have implemented overseas training programs for local team members to improve their skills and assure qualities. And after sales businesses, we have increased our customer touch point from 26 outlet in 2017 to 58 outlet in nationwide. We have strengthened communication with our source brand by increasing information exchange between ISU Japan and the Kenyan teams. Your Excellency, Kenya is an important market with a great potential in Africa. My vision is to see ISU East Africa grow to be a manufacturing hub for the ESC so that it will become a wonderful example for neighboring countries. Our increased assembly capacities from the ED paint plant will help us meet the transportation demand from regional market and support Kenyan aspirations of becoming a significant player in African continental free trade areas. Isuzu East Africa is keen to develop our local content suppliers by working with them to meet international standards and support our product quality objectives. Our commitment to manufacturing excellence, therefore, aligns well with the government's vision of a strong industry base and a sustainable economic growth. I invite all our guests to visit the, and take a tour of the East East Africa plant to see first hand the state of the art technologies that we have invested in. Let me take these opportunities to thank you, East East Africa engineers, who worked hard around the clock to ensure the success of the E-Plan paint. I also wish to express my deepest gratitude to East Motors Japan and our local shareholders, the Kenyan Development Corporations and Centum Investment, who rightly supported the ED paint plant investment. Finally, I would like to express my gratitude to our distinguished guests, especially Your Excellency, the President of the Kenya, Dr. William Rutgers, for taking the time to join us today to celebrate these milestones. Thank you once again. I wish you well, and please enjoy the rest of the programs. As we say here at Isuzu, to Songe Bere Pamojers. Asante Insana, thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Madam uh, Rita, the MD, and the Chairman, Mr. Hiroshi. Your Excellency, with your permission, allow me to invite uh, the Deputy Chief of Mission, yeah. Councillor Embassy of Japan, Mr. Kitagawa Yasuhisha, to make his remarks. Welcome, Your Excellency. His Excellency President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Samuel Nuto, um, Mr. Alfred Kombondo, Principal Secretary, State Department of Trade, Mr. Hiroshi Satomi, Chairman of Isuzu East Africa, Ms. Rita Kabashe, Managing Director of Isuzu East Africa, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Yasuhisa Kitagawa. I'm the deputy head in the Japanese embassy here in Kenya. I am honored to be here today. I represent my ambassador, Okaniwa Ken, who is currently in Japan. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank Isuzu East Africa team for inviting us to such an auspicious occasion and to convey our heartfelt congratulations on the launch of the first electro deposition paint plant in Sub-Saharan Africa. Today, we witness the realization of landmark manufacturing investment by this Japanese company. I believe that this investment goes beyond just an installation of a new paint plant. It signifies the transfer of knowledge, skills, and technological advancement from Japan to Kenya and Africa. Please let me emphasize that this is a typical Japanese 
uh, style of cooperation. We believe in not only just proving mechanics, mechanicals, and building strong infrastructure, but we believe in supporting and committing to the people of Kenya on human capital through technical cooperation. To the technical workers at Isuzu, I am very pleased that you are able to experience this first-hand technology and also to be the first ones among Sub-Saharan Africa to acquire the necessary skills which you can pass on to the next generation. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. I learned that ED paint plant not only enhancing efficiency and productivity using high technology, but it also contributes to factory safety and eco-friendly manufacturing by minimizing waste and reducing the carbon emission. Needless to say, safety is a top priority, especially for Japanese products and for the factory. At the same time, I understand in Kenya, eco-friendliness is also regarded as a priority in manufacturing. In short, it is not too much to say that the new ED paint plant as a symbol of Kenyan factory operated by Japanese style. Moreover, I believe that today's milestone serves as a symbol of the growing economic ties between Japan and Kenya. This year marks the 60th year anniversary of diplomatic relations between our two nations. I would like to take this opportunity, Your Excellency, as a representative from the Japanese government to extend our deepest appreciation to you for hosting our Prime Minister, Mr. Fumio Kishida, last month. Following the summit meeting held at State House, the Embassy is now busy following up on the important issues that were discussed, which includes the enhancement of bilateral economic relations. I am happy to mention that this launching ceremony today symbolizes one such example. Our own history in Japan proves that the growth of manufacturing sector makes an economy very robust and it contributes to increasing the number of employers, facilitating technology transfer and expanding the surrounding industries. In this context, among East and Central African nations, Kenya has a strong advantage and potential to grow its manufacturing sector to a hub. Japanese automotive companies, including Isuzu, already assemble their product locally. Your Excellency, your visit to Japan as a deputy president some years back, I hope you are able to experience Japanese hospitality and their humbleness. With this in mind, I strongly hope that the government of Kenya will continue to extend its support and promote business-friendly policies for manufacturers in order to boost and strengthen the sector. And as a humble Japanese, I claim to be myself, I also would like to appeal and expect that the national automotive policy will be implemented very soon. The government of Japan would highly appreciate if the government of Kenya could communicate with Japanese companies regularly in order to build a brighter future together. Ladies and gentlemen and Excellency, I highly respect your visionary leadership and uh, dedication to achieving economic growth by encouraging the hustlers to live positively and to impact the Kenyan economy. I hope we will build much stronger economic ties and growth together as partners. Asante sana, thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kitagwa, the Deputy Chief of Mission, Council, Embassy of Japan in Kenya. Your Excellency, allow me now to invite the PS State Department for Trade, Mr. Alfred Kobundo, who will invite Your Excellency to make your address. Karibu bwana PS.
to His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, the Chair of Isuzu East Africa, the Executive Director of Isuzu East Africa as well, the Deputy Head of the Japanese Embassy, uh, and also to uh, the representative of some of the investors, like from uh, Centum, uh, all government officials present. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My task is very simple. Uh, this morning, first and foremost, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to convey the solidarity of Honorable Cabinet Minister for Investment, Trade and Industry, Honorable Moses Kuria, uh, who is uh, abroad for duties. I also convey the solidarity of the Principal Secretary for Industry, Dr. Juma Mukwana, who is similarly uh, away uh, abroad for duty. But most importantly is that the Ministry for Investment, Trade and Industry stands in solidarity with what is a historic event today, which is the launching of your electrodeposition plant uh, this afternoon. Very briefly, mine is basically to um, assure Your Excellency and uh, to the investors present of the cooperation and the determination of the State Departments to accelerate the investment story, the trade story, because exports is extremely important for us, and also the industry story, because this is an efficiency-seeking investment one which is difficult to replicate easily across uh, the continent, but it is also one that carries along with it other industries. It carries along with it the hustlers, it carries along with it other industries in the petrochemical sectors, and so on and so forth. So please accept our congratulations for that. As we move ahead, I do take note that there are a number of policy-related matters that have been also um, uh, 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 alluded to by the investors, and please uh, be assured that the Ministry is going to take every effort to ensure that that policy discussion continues, and we request you to kindly uh, help us proceed with that, as His Excellency has committed to dialogue. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly let us be upstanding as we welcome His Excellency the President of the Republic of Kenya to speak with us. Thank you very much. Let's take our seat. I was told that uh, when you go to Rome, you do as the Romans do. Um, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm Jambo. Um, I'm truly grateful to be part of this very important and historic event. History is in the making. Uh, Madam Gavashe has said it's the first time the President of Kenya is coming to this facility that is 45 years old. I apologize on behalf of those who came after me, <laughs> before me, and uh, they have sent me here with their greetings. <laughs> and they have said that it is never too late to do the right thing. Um, secondly, is that we are launching this uh, plant that in itself is uh, uh, history in the making. And therefore, I am delighted to be here, the Isuzu East Africa facility today, to witness history in the making as the company leads our automotive industry to a decisive leap forward. The decision to incorporate the state-of-the-art processes to enhance the standard of local vehicle production to world-class standard is a highly encouraging demonstration of intent by Isuzu to endow the Kenyan manufacturing scene with advanced technologies and enable it attain excellence. This is commendable especially because this commitment introduces the first electro deposition paint plant in our region, which comes at a cost of, I'm informed, Kenya shillings 500 million. I want to say to the Isuzu family, congratulations. Notably, the plant is one component of a drive by Isuzu East Africa to deepen its manufacturing operations in order to improve local vehicle production and make it globally competitive. Other enhancements include upgrading 
the assembly line production for new vehicle models, expanding the service workshop and the installation of various plant and machinery to improve production processes. In total, Isuzu East Africa has invested 1.3 billion shillings within the last four years in the expansion and upgrade, sending a clear and bold signal of its confidence in Kenya as an investment uh, destination. I would like to believe that this is a positive response to our policy measures which we have undertaken to provide incentives for investors to bring or increase their investments into Kenya. And I want to commit that the momentum for the enhanced um, participation of the Kenya government, especially in the realm of providing incentives for manufacturing, is a commitment that I want to make, building on what we have done already, that we are going to not only stay the path, but we are going to accelerate the momentum. Most certainly, this investment aligns with the government's vision to transform our economy by creating an investment climate and business environment that is conclusive, that is conducive to inclusive growth that leaves nobody behind in employment and wealth creation, poverty reduction, and the pursuit of sustainable prosperity. Our incentives package for the manufacturing sector is aimed at increasing its contribution to the national GDP to 20% by 2030. I was speaking about this subject this morning. We did undertake six, seven years ago that we wanted to enhance our uh, manufacturing as a contribution of GDP from 9 to 15%. Unfortunately, it went backwards from 9 to 7.2%. It is the reason why we are now deliberate and intentional on making sure that our policy initiatives speak to manufacturing directly. The reason why we have in our budget this year incentives on how we can use local paint. And I was very pleased, Madam Gavashe told me that they can get all the paint they need produced locally. There is therefore no justification whatsoever for us to continue importing paint which we can manufacture locally. And that is why we have um, in our budget this year um, provided for incentives for local production by making sure that those who want to import it uh, pay uh, some measure of taxing. Same thing we are doing around manufacturing in other areas. Steel manufacture is another area. We have developed sufficient local capacity. There is no justification anymore for us to continue importing steel, which we can manufacture locally. Same with cement, same with furniture. These are among the issues we are doing which are intentional, which are deliberate, and which are practical on making sure that we build our manufacturing capacity. And I want to tell Isuzu East Africa, as I tell all our other manufacturers, you can count on the government of Kenya to continue to provide these policy interventions so that we can enhance local manufacturing. For us to get to 15% manufacturing as a percentage of our GDP by 20 in the next five years. And for us to get to 20% by uh, 2030, it has to be deliberate. It has to be intentional. It has to be practical. It cannot, through, it cannot be through guesswork. We just have to be deliberate on what we are doing. Of course, as we do that, there will be issues raised uh, from different quarters. I have encouraged our brothers at the Kenya Association of Manufacturing to work with us on this uh, trajectory. Um, and, I, and I was uh, asking them the other day, how can the Kenya Association of Manufacturers 
uh, manufacturing be opposed to incentives that enhance manufacturing? It's a contradiction, isn't it? Yes, it is. I mean, they should be the ones celebrating what we are doing to enhance uh, manufacturing. The challenges included policy uncertainty, because that's what Madam Gapache has said, and instability, especially regarding tax laws, absence of a long-term roadmap for the sector, high costs of production, low volumes, inadequate skilled personnel, regional integration challenges, poor incentives, and the vexing matter of vehicle importation age limit. All this is a conversation we have had for a while. Um, it is my intention to make sure that we get ourselves to the realm where we are doing what is right. A national automotive policy is now in place, as session of paper number one of 2022, with mechanisms to support industry growth, such as assembly regulations and tax procedures, public procurement framework to support preferential procurement of locally produced units, national policy on local content or buy Kenya, build Kenya, and vehicle leasing to government institutions. Let me say the following, that we will expand our government leasing, uh, vehicle leasing uh, program to include many, many more areas, including all our forces, whether it is um, our military, we're going to be working now on working with uh, NYS, the police as we are doing at the moment, prisons, and even ministries. We will begin the journey to make it possible for our local manufacturers to supply vehicles to government. The only request I am making to you is that as we buy locally, as we buy new vehicles under the leasing program, you have to guarantee us that these are locally manufactured vehicles employing Kenyans. I was very happy to listen to uh, Madam Kavashe that if we do a few things, we can double the vehicles being manufactured from 11,000 to 24,000 in two years. I will do what I have to do on my side. You have to promise me that you will deliver the 22,000 vehicles on your side. And I am asking the ministry represented here by P.S. Kombudo uh, to give me an appointment with, uh, with these uh, good people, especially in the automotive uh, industry. In the next two weeks, we need to have a meeting. And when you come, when you come to see me, please prepare yourselves so that you come and tell me what I need to do and you tell me what you're going to do. And we all agree on what the outcome will look like. That way, we will be able to march together into the future. Um, the use vehicle standards or the KS1515 is not yet concluded while the institutional framework establishing a national automotive council and the local content development assembly regulations remain outstanding. Even in this partially implemented state, the national automotive policy has increased the purchase of local vehicles by government, especially through leasing, which has boosted MSME engagement in maintenance throughout the country. Additionally, the change of the assembly regulations to allow different levels of vehicle assembly eased entry for new investors and products into the Kenyan industry with the assembly of pickups and passenger vehicles resuming. Further, there has been increased local production of vehicles while new vehicle sales have shifted from fully built units to locally produced or completely knocked down units. I am aware of the opportunity cost of the delays in concluding these policies. As matters stand, we only have one original equipment manufacturer, five motor vehicle assemblers, 
and 32 registered motorcycle assemblers. Together, they assemble 46,000 vehicles and 300,000 motorcycles annually. And even at the current 20 to 30 percent of capacity, they support around 100,000 direct and indirect jobs. Our ambition is not just for these assemblers to operate at full capacity. We want more to set up so that we can supply the African market with globally competitive units, create more jobs, and enhance skill development, as well as promote safe and eco-friendly mobility that is reliable. I am looking forward, as I did announce on uh, Madaraka Day, that uh, we will be on the journey to assembling um, motorcycles, that electric motorcycles for that matter, that, are, um, that do not use fuel. I am also looking forward to the journey to e-mobility, including pickups, trucks, vehicles, two-wheelers, three-wheelers, four-wheelers uh, in Kenya. By September, we will have built the ecosystem for us to begin that journey. And I am looking forward to the participation of our automotive manufacturers in this journey. It is time for Kenya to claim its rightful place among Africa's leading vehicle manufacturers. South Africa's industry, for example, supports 100,000 direct jobs and over 350,000 indirect jobs, which produces 420,000 vehicles, 106,000 of which are exported. Morocco produces 248,000 vehicles, out of which 173,000 are exported, and in the process creates over 160,000 jobs while Egypt's automotive industry employs 70,000 people directly and produces 80,000 vehicles in 2020, with projections to scale up to 500,000 vehicles with exports of 100,000 vehicles. With investments like the electro deposition paint plant by Isuzu East Africa and its expansion and upgrade, upgrading project, I am confident that Kenya can propel itself back to original vision, which was to lead African automotive competitiveness throughout the Africa continental free trade area. I will be making a trip tomorrow very early morning at 6 to Zambia for a meeting on COMESA and how we can bring together COMESA, East African community, and SADC into one ecosystem and one market with 720 million people and a GDP of $1.3 billion. As we consolidate the African market, our manufacturers must focus on the bigger opportunity that comes with a consolidated market, not just looking at Kenya, but looking at the region as well. I have heard it is uh, Toyota East Africa. Maybe it's going to be Toyota something. Not Toyota, but Isuzu. It's Isuzu East Africa at the moment. Maybe shortly we will be talking about Isuzu Africa, and we can be able to build that market together. <laughs> we are listening to you because we want to work together. We want to encourage Isuzu East Africa and other investors to deepen their investment in the country by moving into tier one component manufacturing and rapidly graduating to fully integrated manufacturing plants. This is why we are taking measures to conclude the preparation of the automotive bill in order to guarantee the implementation of the policy and formation of the council. P.S. That exercise should be concluded in the next 120 days. And whatever matters, whatever matters that are outstanding in court, we need to negotiate them out of the courts and get ourselves moving the way we've done in other sectors. We are also proceeding to review existing regulations and standards guided by the objective of enhancing the performance of our automotive industry. We are intent 
on fully exploiting the immense opportunity presented in the form of our automotive industry's untapped potential. We shall listen, partner, collaborate, and engage industry actors in a committed and intentional manner until the share of automotive industry in manufacturing as well as the share of manufacturing to our GDP moves sharply in a positive direction as we have committed ourselves. Let me also um, inform our automotive industry that recently I was presented with a catalog of what our military needs to uh, use in, in their operations. And I insisted that 60% of all the purchases of trucks, pickups, and all the other um, uh, motor vehicles that are available, manufactured in Kenya, should be procured from the Kenyan industry. I have been very clear in my mind that there is only one way to build our manufacturing capacity. There is only one way how we are going to get the millions of young people in our streets, villages, towns, and shopping centers. There is only one way how we are going to get the 500,000 young people who graduate from our TVETs with skills, with competences, with knowledge, how we are going to bring them on board. We have to be intentional. We have to be deliberate about our manufacturing interventions. And we will work together. We will ensure that government gives priority, preferential priority to local manufacturers. We will ensure that we continue the journey to listen to industry so that they can tell us what they think government can do in terms of policy to support manufacturing so that we can grow um, our uh, local SMEs, expand opportunities for employment, be able to pay uh, the taxman, and all of us be able to move forward. I was very happy when uh, um, the CEO said they, they are paid 21 billion shillings to the, or in taxes. That was very good. To uh, Abigail Makofi. She did ask, she did ask me to support the industry by making sure that we deal with the challenge of pending bills. I agree with you, Madam and I will go out of my way to deal with the challenge of pending bills. But I also need some help. Please, <laughs> if you can also help me so that we can all begin the journey, not to think so much about debt, but to think so much about how to raise our local revenues. At the moment, as a country, we are raising 14% of our taxes as a percentage of GDP. Japan, our good friends here, are upwards of 34%. They pay more taxes than we do. So uh, I'm, I'm, I need also some help, uh, Madam Gavashe. If you can persuade all of us to pay tax, I will sort out quickly your pending bills. <laughs> yeah, because uh, the only other option I have is to go borrow to pay you. And I have taken the decision that as president of Kenya, we are not going to borrow to pay our debts. That one we will not do. Because it is not right to dig one hole to fill another. It is not correct to rob Peter to pay Paul. I think we just have to do the right thing. And I am very happy that the people of Kenya are standing with all of us to make sure that we put our country on the sound footing that we can carry 
and live within our means. This is the assurance that I have come to give you as I witness this delight, this commendable achievement by Isuzu East Africa and celebrate one major stride in the progress of Kenyan enterprise. I can see firsthand that our bottom-up economic transformation agenda is in good hands as far as the automotive industry is concerned. Congratulations when I saw many of your partners who are doing different parts, um, brake parts and, and all the other parts that uh, you work with, the MSMEs that work with you in, in all the other sectors. I, I was, and when I saw the young people who are working on the, um, what was that, Machinani? Eh? Part shop Machinani. That, that was very encouraging and uh, I am very confident that together we can collaborate and make Kenya great. Congratulations to all of you. <laughs> Keep it up. Isuzu East Africa Electro Deposition Paint Plant is now launched and my very best wishes as you invest into the future. Thank you very much. God bless you.